We were given one new theme each week to create a game for seven weeks. This video will talk about the themes Voice, Solve It and Choose Your Own Theme, going forward in the order of which they were created. So we'll start with... Now for the 9 o'clock news. Two girls were found dead this evening at around 7 p.m. in a forest around Leeds. They were discovered by a young couple who wished to remain anonymous. The girls were reportedly tied to a tree and left bloodied and battered by an unknown assailant. The victims have not yet been identified, and currently, no witnesses have come forward about the crime. Police are urging locals to report anything they may know of either the identities of the victims or their attackers. This game rolls around this radio that you swan in front of. It tells the player a news story about two girls that were murdered in the forest nearby. You play as the killer of these two girls, and you'll listen to the news coverage, listening to how far the police are in the race to catch you. Radio works by using an audio volume placed on the radio, which should make it quieter as the player moves further away from it. I wanted the house to be quite dark, using ambient shadows with Unreal's lighting, which helped to do that immensely. I tried to make the block out use the colours that would be used by the appliances or the furniture in the actual game to make it feel more like a normal home. But you might have noticed this purple box next to the player's spawn. This is supposed to be a newspaper and it's purple so you can tell it apart from the other white parts of the house. Its purpose was to be hung from the wall as the days went by. On the newspaper by the chair would be a current radio message for the player, while hung up on the wall would be the previous day's newspaper. This was supposed to look like the player has been hanging them up like trophies. The other part of the gameplay is doing house tasks while the radio is playing. In this level you have to make some food using the blocky knife and yellow block. Other things that the player could do later in the game are things like hoovering and doing the dishes. Going upstairs brings us to the bathroom on the right of the corridor and your bedroom to the left. The end of the game would be in the bathroom, where the radio describes what the killer looks like and they are revealed to the player in the mirror. The bathroom wouldn't be open until the final day, so until then, the day won't end until you go to bed. Yeah, that's right for this game, let's go on to the next one. <laughs> the next game is a puzzle platformer. The game is made in Unity and revolves around the player moving these big blue and green boxes across platforms. The player can jump on top of the blue boxes, but can't jump when on top of the green boxes. The game would have some collectibles throughout the levels, like keys and currency, with different puzzles for each level. Currently, nearly each platform has a different puzzle for the player to solve to progress. The art solve for the game would be a pixel art robot being tested by scientists to test his intelligence and the boxes would be electrical looking boxes. Later on, the player comes up to a platform that they can't jump on, with a green box and a hole in the platform the player to move the box into. This could also be expanded if the player was given extra abilities like shooting or a melee attack, and this by changing the layer the platform had. The player jumps by checking if the player is touching something that has the layer ground, and then enables the player to jump. So for the green boxes and for this platform, they don't have the ground tag on them. So when the player checks if they're touching the ground, the game sees they aren't and disables jumping. She also has default inputs that can be called in scripts. This game uses left, right and jump from Unity's input library to control the player. The camera is stuck to the player and moves everywhere they go. Since it is locked to the player, it would also rotate with the player if the z-axis wasn't locked. The camera is not the best as you can't really see much. So going forward, the camera would be zoomed out and maybe given a dead zone so the camera isn't static. Not going I want to do that, but I forgot how to. So here's the next game where I do a lot of this stuff. <laughs> this is a really cute platformer. I wanted you to play as this cat that I drew. I even made animations for it, but I couldn't get an opportunity, so I have to settle for this fox. This game was supposed to be a platformer that starts off really calm with you collecting flowers, then devolving into like Blight Town from Dark Souls. Both the flowers and enemies were drawn by me in Photoshop. The flowers give you a score on the top left when you move on to them, and for some reason, someone give you two. I don't know why, there's probably just two of them in the same spot. But the enemies are the first time I've done something like this in Unity. They have paths that go across the level, and when they reach the end of it, they'll rotate the other direction and start travelling that direction. When the player collides with them, they'll go back to the start of the level. Nothing brings on nicely to the camera. When you die, it's a bit jarring with the camera having to follow you back to the start instantly. The camera has a dead zone on it using Cinemachine. Cinemachine is a tool in Unity that I use for the purpose of creating a dead zone, but lets the player walk about a little bit without the camera moving. But of course, the camera does have an issue. Here at the pit, the player moves too quickly and the camera gets left behind, which means the player can't see down into the pit and there could have been an instant death waiting at the bottom of it, which would have been unfair. But it would have been funny to just have one tile that's safe and just force trial and error. This game uses tile maps, which let you paint a level or a game using tiles. The tile map in this level is from an asset pack called Sunnyland, but you can make your own. When you put in tiles, they will have collision, but there is a collider for tile maps that you can add in Unity. This asset pack also includes animation for the player. In Unity, you animate by adding the frames of the animation to the animation timeline. You can then use the animator 
to play the animation during different states, like running and idle. As for controls, they're all the same from the previous game apart from one. This game uses Unity's Fire 1 input to shoot knives towards the enemies. This input was changed to a different button because I wanted to use a Switch controller, and by default the Unity binds for Xbox and PlayStation controllers. When the knives collide with the enemies, the enemies will explode into blood. This is done by using Unity's particle system. When an enemy is killed, the script of the knife activates the particles on the spot the knife collides with the enemy. Going forward, the game needs some more levels, as well as possible use for the flowers collected. The enemies should also drop flowers or give the player extra score since they have them on their heads. Speaking of enemies, some variety would be nice. Maybe ones that move faster or shoot back at the player or have more health, etc. Maybe the player can also have more than one health. Yeah, th th thanks for watching. Uh, there'll be some stuff in the description probably. I don't know. Uh, bye.